And there's a harvest of great classic comedy from Surbiton's most famous neighbours on this BBC audio collection. Pretty dramatic in its own right. The energy involved is just staggering. Advice from Alan in half an hour, horrifying predictions in Horizon at nine, but next on BBC Two, the search for Top Dog gets underway with Crufts. It's a big weekend in the Six Nations Championship as the Italians come to Fortress Twickenham and the Celts battle for pride. Scotland versus Wales Saturday at four and England versus Italy Sunday at 2.45. Live and interactive on BBC One. Catch it, it's a ball. changes everything. How you see yourself. How you see the world. And how the world sees you. The award-winning story of one man's struggle to overcome injury and prejudice. The television premiere of The Officer's Ward. Saturday Cinema, Saturday at 9, only on BBC4. On BBC Two, it's the highlight of the canine calendar as we join Philippa Forrester live from the NEC in Birmingham for the first day at Crufts. Last year, we saw Crufts' first ever European Lord winner. But this is the first year that American dogs can enter. Will one of them become best in show 2003? <laughs> Now, over the next four days, there'll be lots of winners, but there can only be one best in show. And last year's champion was bought as a family pet and only then went on to become the family's first ever show dog. So join us then as we discover who will follow last year's reigning champion, top score, contradiction, standard poodle, into the record books. Could be you, Madeline, you never know. Come on. Over 20,000 dogs will come to the NEC. Tails are wagging, each hoping that 2003 will be their lucky year. But there's so much more to Crufts than show dogs. Five huge exhibition halls full. Melissa Hilton's already hard at work, sniffing out the Crufts hotspots, just like Morse here. You're a good boy. Do you want my money? Not that. Oh, well done. <laughs> I've got some top tips on what to see if you're one of Crufts' 150,000 visitors, human or canine. Peter Purvis has got to keep up with some of the more agile dogs at Crufts. Of course, we'll keep you posted as the knockout competitions develop, and we'll bring you the finals of the very exciting agility and flyball competitions on Sunday evening. Jessica Holmes keeping an eye on some very well-behaved dogs. Would you sit down? Whereas the agility and flyball competitors are the real speedsters of the dog world, this is about choreographed precision. And I'll be bringing you the highlights of the obedience competition before the weekend's out. And helping us keep across all 34 breed rings are the expert keen eyes of Frank Kane and Wayne Kavanagh. Well, we've got the Spaniels, the Retrievers, the Setters and the Pointers. Two kids in a canine candy store, Frank. But where do we start? Wayne, this way. And if you're feeling all inspired and you'd like to start showing your mutt, then here's how. The Kennel Club have produced this year a really handy pack. It's got loads of useful stuff just about owning a dog, but also about showing dogs. Now, you can get this pack here or direct from the Kennel Club or go to our website and we'll point you in the right direction. That's www.bbc.co.uk forward slash crust. And to find out more about showing and show dogs, we sent Frank and Melissa to Coventry. Well, it was a dog show. We're outside the Sports Connection in Coventry for the Coventry and District Gun Dog Show. I've got my beginner's pack. 
But Frank, it's the middle of December, Cross isn't till March. What are we doing here today? Well, dog showing is an all the year round event, and this is the sort of show you'd find in most parts of the country most weekends of the year. One of the last chances to qualify for Cross today, so it might be exciting. Oh, you've got your taken my So, Frank, are all the gun dog breeds here today? Well, I think we'll find about 27 breeds here. Now, how many dogs can qualify for Crust? Well, this is an open show, so only the best in show winner, the reserve best in show and best puppy can qualify today. You see, most of the qualifying is done at championship shows and where dogs who win classes and get placed in classes can go to Crufts. They get their ticket for Crufts there. So if you want to get into showing dogs, how do you get started? Well, obviously, the first thing you need is a pedigree dog. You then get yourself to a dog show, see if you fancy the competitive element, and off you go. OK, well, I'm going to go and do some homework. What are you going to do I'm now? going to watch some judging, of course. OK, so what breed are these dogs? These are large Munsterlanders. This is a Hungarian Vigna. She's 17 months old. Her name is Linka. Paul, first time in the ring today with your 13-month-old Welsh Springer Hugo. That's right. right. <laughs> How did it go? We saw, uh, you, we saw you performing very well, actually, and you ended up with a third prize there. Um, I was a bit nervous, but obviously the dog wasn't. He was taking it all in his stride. Yeah. We have Mrs Bevan here with her new puppy, Toffee, six months and a week old. What's brought you here today? We'd like to try and qualify her for crafts. It's not Yes, not and she, she might easy. have older puppies against she her today. Will, she will, because there's no puppy class yes. today. Well, Toffee did do well. She won best puppy in her breed, but that was as far as she went on this day. Hard luck, Toffee. Frank, what's going on here? Well, I'm just watching the Golden Retrievers. This is the most popular of the gun dog breeds. We can expect about um, 500 of them at Crufts, but uh, nice class today. They know when they've won, don't they? They just love it. They're all proud. Well, the owners are, <laughs> yes. Anyway, how did you find? Did you find a breed you liked? Oh, I found so many, and they all look so beautiful. Let's go look at a few. Yeah, there's a few over there I'd like to show you. Right. Right, well, this is the exciting part of the day. Best of breed, judge is now looking to all the winners and she's going to decide on best in show. Surely she's going to have a favourite breed of her own. It's well, going to be hard to be subjective. Well, well, you have to be objective in it and, and put personal preferences aside and judge to a breed standard. Here's the flat coat, a racy lined dog. They're quite different from Very the Labrador. Prissy. Well, I don't know whether we'd call them pretty, but they still have to be functional gun dogs and go with good power and really stride out in front. Now, a lot of people showing dogs here today do it every weekend of the year, and some of them have already qualified for clubs. So how come they're spending their weekend showing still? Well, it's for the love of the sport and the love of their breed. And, you know, it does become addictive. After all, this is what you want to take home, rosettes and your trophy. So dog shows are a really good place to find out about different breeds. Have you ever seen a Columbus Spaniel before? Go back to sleep, it's all right, love. <laughs> now, there are 4,910 gun dogs here. By the end of the show, only one goes through to Best in Show on Sunday. So how do you go about judging between all the different types? I can see what Millie and Levi have in common, their beauty. <laughs> but other than that, how do you judge two such different dogs? Well, each breed is measured against its breed standard. So Minnie here would be measured against the Cocker Spaniel standard, Levi against the Wirehead standard. But underpinning all that is a knowledge of conformation and movement. Right, conformation. We're going to hear a lot about that in the next four days. What is it? It's the dog's anatomy, how the dog is put together. So the judge will be looking for good shoulder angulation, correct bone for the breed, a nice rib cage, and well-rounded hind quarters to allow the dog to move well. <laughs> then on top of that, we want breed type. Now, breed type is the essence of the breed. For instance, Levi here will want, essential for this breed, a wire coat with good undercoat, strong jaws for carrying the game. 
in the right. cocker, big ribs, short back, this lovely rounded bottom breed type. Well, on top of that, we want performance. A dog who enjoys in the ring and goes well. That's going to catch the judge's eye. Get all three in one dog, and there you have a winner. Oh, yes, there's been a lot of tail wagging here today. Very happy dogs and very happy judges. They've been busy judging all day, and it's nearly time to see today's top dogs in the group judging. But to get to know each group better, we invited some of the breeds out for a day in the countryside to Longleat in Wiltshire. So let's start with the gun dogs. Round, round, get around, I get out in the field in all weathers, the gun dog is a hard worker and loyal companion. Truly worthy of the mantle, man's best friend. The Chesapeake Bay Retriever comes complete with a waterproof coat and webbed feet. Very useful. They're bred for retrieving wild ducks and geese. And as you can see from the coat, um, they don't mind the cold water. That, together with a healthy appetite, makes them the ultimate water dog, but they're not for the faint-hearted. With only 50 of these in the country, you probably won't have seen one before. Coyote Hounds are originated in Holland as a decoy dog, luring ducks into nets, the ducks being attracted by his bright colours, jaunty action and the feathery tail. From one of the more unusual breeds to one of the most popular, it's also the most winning breed at Crafts. I wonder if we're looking at a future champ here. Cocker Spaniels have a great retrieving instinct, and Lauren has been known to come down the stairs with a dirty sock in her mouth. Lauren is actually a mum. These are her puppies, Lulu and Woody, and they're both five months of age. Ah, uh, with his beautiful, rich chestnut coat, Derry adds a touch of glamour to the gun dog group. The Irish setter has a reputation of being a little uncontrollable. This I've never found to be so. Uh, give them plenty of love, a good warm bed, good food and attention, and you'll end up with a very good pet. Dubbed the Grey Ghost because of his beautiful colouring, the Weimarana is an all-round gun dog. He's that's a right. wonderful dog for a household that's interested in dog training and partaking in dog sport. I think they were having a nice time. But now, which breeds caught the judge's eye here in the main ring today? Let's join Jessica, Wayne and Frank to find out which gun dog will be judged best in group. And you join us in the gun dog group ring. Everybody excited, this is the first group of the year. First one up is a pointer, show champion Herwin Crepe Suzette. Didn't make the final cut, but a beautiful dog. Yes, a series of graceful curves should embody this dog with beautiful head and lovely nostrils. This, the German short-haired pointer, show champion Isara Kurzau Wooster for Merganza. Again, a breed bred to go out and hunt all day has to have the confirmation and balance and endurance to do the job. A real flashy gun dog, this. The American Cocker Spaniel, American champion, TLC and Oz, just kidding. And this one's come over from Spain to win today. It's a cousin of our Cocker Spaniel. Sloping top line, luxuriant coat. The Chesapeake Bay Retriever, this American champion Penrose Punt Gunner Game Scout. This is a wonderful breed for those who have the conditions for this dog. They love the icy cold water. They are bred for the Chesapeake Bay, which has very difficult conditions. A real contrast here, the Field Spaniel show champion, Jesham the Painted Lady. One of the minority Spaniel breeds, but this is a beautiful bitch. Lovely long foreface, chiseling under the eyes in glorious condition. And an old favourite of mine, the Italian Spinoni show champion, Ricchini Caprice. A dog that doesn't necessarily look like the other bird dogs in the gun dog group, but certainly has the attitude and instinct. So, those were some that didn't make it to the final cut. This is Terry Thorne, our judge for the Gun Dog Group this year, one of our most important judges in this country, very experienced. This is his final cut. The first dog up, English setter, Bornhouse Hyacinth. She's a bitch called Jilly at home. She's five years old and belongs to Mrs. Penny Williams, who, of course, won best in show here back in 73 with Bornhouse Dancing Master. Well, the setters have done very well at Crufts. In fact, gun dogs have won best in show here more than any other breed. 
by a good margin indeed, along with the Terriers. This is the English Setter, and it's a different breed than the Irish and Gordon, not just in color and the Irish red and white, but in temperament and scope. The English Setter is more dog than the Irish Setter, but less than the Gordon Setter. And this comes from a very successful kennel. They've had best in show here at Crufts in the past with their famous Bornhouse Dancing Master. And this bitch is a descendant of him. Looking lovely in the ring. And so, too, did this beautiful dog. Called Miguel at home, he's an Italian champion, Lodstar Tamburello, handled in the ring by Ludovica Ivaldi, who I believe is a vet coming over from Italy to show him. What a picture standing. He is a picture. He's in glorious condition. The Gordon Setter is the heavyweight of the setters and should resemble something like the heavyweight hunter. He's notable for his beautiful bl coal black coat and rich tan markings. This dog is a spectacular dog. Holds himself well in the ring and goes with his long reaching stride. Lashing tail action. He's got so much setter quality about him and really enjoying his experience in the big ring. This is a magnificent dog and does the international flavor again proud. And that fantastic construction showing on the move. Beautiful dog. So too the Irish setter, always popular in the gun dog ring, show champion Cataluna G. Wiz. He's a six-year-old dog called Henry at home in Nantwich in Cheshire with Liz Rose Hay. Rachel Shaw is handling today, who of course also won best in show here with Starshell Chicago Bear, who I believe is this dog's sire. Yes, it is his sire. And the interesting part is Irish setters have done very well. In between Chicago Bear, there was a dog... Uh, and a, a father and son, Caspian's Intrepid and his sire, who also won Best in Show here. So the Irish setters have done very well. That beautiful, rich mahogany coat, the flowing action, and the beautiful body lines that defines this breed. But they are clearly different from the other two setters, the other three setters, I should say. A beautiful representative of the breed. And we move on now to a flat-coated retriever with enough titles, goodness me, international champion, Nordic champion, Finnish champion, Inkwell's named Shadow. He belongs to Suzanne Lindstrom, who's come over to show him today at Crufts from Sweden. Absolutely delightful comment. He won second prize in an open-class field trial, and she's still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a magnificent dog. Scandinavia's produced some marvellous flat-coated retrievers in recent years, and this dog epitomises the quality and type you'd find over there. The flat coat is the raciest, the raciest and perhaps most elegant of the retriever breeds. Clean lines, lovely chiseling in the head, a long head with lovely eye and expression. And again, holding that top line and striding out well. This dog looks so balanced on the move. This is a superb example and that gorgeous wedge-shaped head, very different from the other retrievers and a spectacular example to see for a fairly rare breed. And they have wonderful temperaments, they never stop wagging. Now, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this is a little bit of a senior citizen at eight and a half years old. This bitch called Mary at home and Kara, quite contrary of Anima, belongs to Janet Buckingham from Dawlish in Devon. She's won from the veteran class, took the bitch ticket, then took best of breed. That is quite an achievement for the biggest entry of the show, just about. It is, especially when you consider the depth of the entry. Not just a lot of golden retrievers here at Crufts, but so many good ones all through the ranks in every class today. She really did a great job defending the title for these old dogs who have every bit the confirmation and structure to win as the young dogs do on the day. A wonderful breed, very friendly, of course. They have to have that attitude and the coat to be a golden retriever. And so popular here at Crufts always. To win from a massive entry like that, they must be thrilled. This is Asquan's Giannio, belonging to Anne and Alan Webster from Markfield in Cheshire. Anne and Alan, of course, have been in the breed, Cocker Spaniels, for 35 years. She's winning her second challenge certificate today. Yes, now, the Asquan's kennel have had a lot of winners in the past, but this is their first best of breed at Crufts. Anne tells me she won the Bitch CC here for, with the mother, grandmother and great-grandmother, but this is the first time she's taken best to breed so that's very good the cocker spaniel should be essentially a merry unexaggerated dog she's full of quality and enjoying her time here and actually describes her as a typical naughty cocker <laughs> which is just as they should be still quite a young bitch asquan's Giorgiano. this welsh springer spaniel oh when she walked into the ring Drop Dead Gorgeous, I think, is not too much of an emphasis. Show champion Ferndell Copyright. He's a dog named Shane, belonging to Mrs. Marion Thurwell, but handled in the ring by her son, John. He was the top Welsh male in 2001 and the top Welsh in 2002. 
Well, this dog took my breath away the second he stepped in the ring. And I'll t if I had the space in a crate, I would be over at John's after the group trying to buy this one. This is a spectacular dog. Beautiful rich mahogany coat. Beautiful balance. You can see the, the front and rear of this dog match perfect harmony. And that's why he moves with such grace and such effortless movement, ground covering movement. Beautiful head and tight. I really like this dog. John was best of breed here with his dog's mother last year and went second in the group. Can he go one better? Oh, he's got to be a contender. And finally, the Weimarana show champion Leana Riffraff, who's got a junior warrant. Now, technically, this dog is an American competitor because his owners, Jenna Ward and Barry Samria, actually moved to Florida, Florida very short, very recently, just a few weeks ago. So he's come all the way over from America to compete here. Yes, but he's really a British dog. He was bred here and had a very good career before he went. And I'm told that he's, he's launched his career in America and has already won there. He is a lovely example of the breed. First of all, the colour, the grey ghost dog dog they should have this lovely metallic sheen on their coat gray ghost dogs they're called and this dog beautiful lines sweeping movement Wayne how will he go down in America well I would think he'd be a welcome addition to the stud gene pool there this is a dog that has balance and a beautiful front things that we don't necessarily have in American spades now Terry Thorne taking a final look at that eight and he has to decide who's going to be our first group winner for cross 2003 It's going to be the flat-coated retriever competing all the way from Italy. International champion Inkwell's named shadow with Susan Lindstrom. Not Italy, I apologise, from Sweden. Beautiful dog. Uh, and a worthy winner here. In second place, that Welsh Springer Spaniel. A super dog and defeated by a great one in the flat coat too. This is a very strong gun dog group. And the American Weimarana into group three. He really is American now. Well, that makes the, the journey worthwhile from Florida. And in fourth place, the Irish setter, show champion Cataluna G. Wiz with Rachel Shaw handling. And again, the Irish setters farewell here at Crufts. But we have our first group winner. The flat-coated retriever has taken the gun dog group for Crufts 2003. And congratulations to them. And we have 10 American dogs, including that one, that have qualified for Crufts this week. So... There'll be more chances to see American dogs probably doing very well later on in the week. And we've got our first finalist there for 2003. Six more to go in the next three days. Now, lots more has been happening here at the NEC today. So let's catch up with Melissa. OK, it's the first day of crafts and we want to make the most of it. But it is the biggest dog show in the world. So where do we start? There are five massive halls here, all of them filled with various show rings, and over the next few days, over 20,000 dogs will be judged right here. Any one of them could be a winner. Well, the competition is intense and the standard is extremely high. The dogs don't seem nervous, unlike some of the owners. Showing here for the very first time is Paul Leng. We saw him earlier putting Hugo, his Welsh Springer Spaniel, through his paces in Coventry. So what are you most excited or nervous about? Uh, just being here. Um, it's, it's the biggest show we'll ever get to, and it's a, an honour to be here. Paul and Hugo were up against stiff competition, but they still did really well. A very respectable, highly commended fifth place. Today, the judging is concentrating on gun dogs. But if you fancy a change, come to Discover Dogs. It's one of the best things about Crufts, where you'll find every size, shape, and breed of dog. And if you're lucky, you'll catch a glimpse of Kato, the long-haired Akita puppy. He's 10 months old, and look at that face. Should be on the cover of every magazine. <laughs> side of the hall is the special events ring and every day there's some different organized demonstration like the fly ball events or the heel work to music but going on behind me is a very impressive dogs for the disabled display helped along by a fairly familiar face the basic obedience is very important things like sitting staying just generally obeying 
I'm vice patron of the charity and they asked me if I would uh, help them to put together a demonstration. They've never done one before. The charity is primarily concerned with partnering up a disabled person with a dog who will assist them in all sorts of things. Picking up things that they drop, you know, 5p pieces, wallets, getting the telephone when it rings. And it's actually really good that in their 15th anniversary year we've got a demonstration here at Crofts. They're very pleased. What are you doing for the rest of the morning? Now? Well, like most women, I'm going to enjoy going shopping. There's over 300 exhibitors. It's a lot. Yeah. See if you can pick me up something, something that goes with the jacket. Well, yeah, I think like a, like a nice Diamante uh, dog collar, something like that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think that would look really 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 nice. nice. Do you know she got him a lovely Diamante dog collar? Will he wear it? No. Now, you may remember last year a new competition took place as an exhibition. The Breeder Stakes gives breeders a chance to show the breadth of quality in their kennel. Each entrant shows up to five dogs, in some cases quite a handful. Let's see the judges' top ten. The inaugural Breeder Stakes, and the judge for this will be Zena Thorne Andrews. As Philip has said, they qualify three, four or five dogs. They all come from the same breeder. Quite a job to get five dogs already looking good. This is Dave Killerley's famous Red Witch Akita team. Frank. And they look spectacular. With the, the beautiful, bright colours. They're strong dogs, sharp, pointed ears, lots of substance. They need a firm handler. Well, they've got one in Dave. These are the German Wirehead Pointer team, the Keymax team. It's spectacular to see a breed like this, which isn't a very popular breed, represented so evenly. This is a great tribute to the breeders, and we can't forget that these individual dogs we see at night come from breeders. Well, this is Francis Kral's Jaffrax Giant Schnauzer, and I think they look sensational. A high, highly successful kennel, and again, uniformity. All the dogs look alike, and that's the mark of a good breeder. They turn them out of a mould. And here we have the Hungarian Vizslers. This is the Tragus team. Mr. and Mrs. Upton owned them. And again, look, aren't they beautifully turned out? All well, five. Of course, the colours are, are the same as they would be in this breed, but it's more than that. It's the balance, the type, the elegance, all stamped on all of these exhibits. A wonderful tribute to a great programme. Regular exhibitors here at Crufts, Liz Dunhill with a Fantaso Rottweiler team. And again, don't, just brilliant. Absolutely. Beautiful black coats with their rich tan markings. Moderate size lovely quality big powerful strong dogs my favorites the wonderful merry bear newfoundlands paddy and uh, gordon there messrs cuts and galvin aren't they splendid now i know how fond are you you are of these peter i was wondering if you'd like to take all five home in the car tonight would that be a little messy maybe oh, too much slobber <laughs> <laughs> they are magnificent though. they're just beautiful. very beautiful and so too are these the smooth collies this is a rarity i think seeing all five here mr and mrs haywood's fox earth team Again, they should be identical to the rough collie, but 